ether channel on the firewall ether channel on the asa device so ether channel we know it's an aggregation of uh, links bundling links or uh, for redundancy not only for redundancy even for load balancing we need ether channel this is a very common uh, well popular technology that we use in distribution layer mostly in distribution layer or aggregation layer you no know, where a lot of segments are connected a lot of access layer devices are connected a lot of bandwidth between devices is needed wherever we have that type of requirement wherever we need uh, more bandwidth than the capable bandwidth on a interface we need to bundle the interface so that we can get more bandwidth so say for example here we have a uh, gig interfaces and uh, one gig it supports if i want more throughput between these two switches then i need to bundle it logically so that i can get 4 gig that's the basic idea where ether channel is needed that's the main place where ether channel is needed not only that it also provides redundancy meaning if one of the link goes down uh, still there are other three links to take care of the load to take care of the load so redundancy is also there uh, and all four are active so if it is stp then it would have uh, blocked three ports and only one will be active other three will be unused whereas load balancing it it helps to utilize the bandwidth that you have in a full optimized way optimum utilization of the links that you have uh you can achieve through ether channel which is not possible through a normal stp behavior so ether channel is good it also provides the load balancing capability it also provides redundancy it also helps you to utilize the total bandwidth that you have in between the switches though you got written and link there is no loop is going to be seen here the reason is we don't have redundant links as separate separate link we have bundled them we have grouped them as one single logical link that's why port channel is important ether channel is important uh, and very good when you compare to normal stp network what ether channel does is it hash the uh traffic it hashes the traffic and sends the traffic on all four links and by doing so it it provides load balancing now hashing is done before sending through the logical link because it is not single link it is multiple link through which the load has to be sent across so those things are taken care of anyhow so fault tolerance is also there meaning when one of the link goes down still you got uh, there are three links to take care of the load uh, so fault tolerance is also there more bandwidth is there load balancing is there redundancy is there uh, full optimum utilization of bandwidth is there when you have ether channel so stp will see it as one single link logical link now when you have ether channel you can have up to 16 link in the bundle ASA supports up to 16 link in the bundle but only 8 will be active the other 8 will be standby though you are having 16 in the bundle you will have only 8 in 8 active interfaces in a port channel now you may ask then why i need 16 in the bundle no cisco is not asking you to have 16 in the bundle they say you can have up to 16 but active links are 8 if you want to have one or two extra you can have it so that if one among the eight goes down still you will have eight links active because you got other two active links that is the idea so you can have up to 16 per port channel now when you bundle the links together make sure those links are of same type meaning they all need to be access or they all need to be trunk and make sure they all allow the same number of vlans you know 
and also the speed should be same and the duplex should be same in ASA half duplex is not supported so make sure all the links are full duplex and speed is same don't try to mix gig ethernet with fast ethernet and normal ethernet don't do like that speed need to be same next you know about ASA on ASA every interface has to be given an IP address but right now the interface is not a physical interface you have put all the physical interface you have bundled it you got a logical interface now so you, you need not to give IP address to the physical interface make sure only the physical interface is given no shutdown it should be up in the physical interface you simply say no shutdown but go to the PO interface port channel interface give the name for the interface give the security level give the IP address so whatever you will do it on the physical interface now you need to do it on the logical interface port channel interface right so anything anything that you want to apply on the physical interface now you are going to apply on the logical interface say for example you want to apply uh, ACL but right now on the outside interface you have bundled let's assume you have bundled four physical links so where do you apply the ACL to the name that you have given on the to the name that you have given on the port channel interface not not anywhere on the physical interface all right next is um, you can have two links in the bundle or four links or eight links no odd numbers okay no odd number interface have two four eight so even if you have three links all three will not be active two will be active if you have five links four will be active if you have nine links eight will be active right that is how the hashing algorithm uh, works to do load balancing all right now only one more uh, point that I want to discuss here is ASA won't support the proprietary ether channel protocol PAGP even though it is designed by Cisco PAGP is by Cisco Cisco don't support it in ASA uh, it, it supports only LSA so LSAP okay link aggregation control protocol is the only protocol that is used for load balancing or you can go for on mode on mode is nothing but statically you turn on the ether channel on both side LACP you can use it for a negotiation of ether channel or you can statically turn it on by using on mode this is also applicable in switches so when you have LACP you have two modes right active and passive now when you say active on both side the ether channel will form, come faster will will be enabled faster so i recommend you to put active on both side one side active one side passive is okay but more good is putting active on both side it's not only in asa it's everywhere wherever you enable ether channel right so what we have, we are going to do we are going to give IP address and then the um, name if and then the security level everything on the port channel yeah interface PO1 PO2 no port channel interface not on the physical interface physical interface has to be enabled that's all no shutdown has to be given and then uh, go to the physical interface uh, sorry go to the port channel interface and say what all interface belong to this port channel see this is you know kind of a nice approach here see usually when we create when you when you create port channel you assign it to the physical interface but here you assign the physical interface to the port channel interface so let's see the configuration part of it this is how it is you create the port channel interface called interface port channel 1 give a name give security level give IP address I'm showing you in the bottom and then 
you call this port channel group under the physical interface oh oh okay so it's it's the same way i thought like a redundant interface in redundant interface we used to say members under the redundant interface so here the member interface we don't say it here no. in the words you know they have confused here there is no members won't come here okay member interface is only for uh, uh no, no, no redundant concept we are going to learn next concept called redundant interface there only we used to say member interface here we we create port channel and then we call the channel group under the physical interface okay add the physical interface to the port channel group add the physical interface to the port channel group remove the names from okay this is all done so let's let's see the implement implementation side of this all right let's start the configuration from the switch side interface port channel one i'll give uh, no switch port works ip address see whatever you whatever we give on uh, the physical interface we need to give it on the logical interface here we are seeing the port channel configuration on the switch now so i'm giving 20.0.0.2 as the sorry i'll give uh, 20.0.0.20 as the ip address on the switch port channel interface okay so on asa what i'll give is 20.0.0.10 mm, that's the idea all right next is i'll say notion i think it's not necessary here uh, what else that's it so what we are trying to enable is a layer 3 port channel now i'll go under interface ethernet 0 slash 1 hyphen 2 ethernet range in nexus device even if you don't say range if you have a range of uh, interface it will automatically take as a range smart in here you know you need to say everything no switch port and then i'll say channel group group id 1 i'll say active say mode active so layer 3 port channel is enabled it, it is already working uh, host name switch so the remote side we have not enabled uh, so I need to go to ASA now let's go to ASA ASA, I'll say interface port channel. Interface. Okay, let me go and enable those interfaces first. G0 slash 0, no shut. Interface G0 slash 2, no shut. interface port channel 1 so due to the license issue you know we we are not continuing that configuration on ASA side let's move on to the next uh, topic called a redundant interface it is somewhat similar but not exactly the same right let us see that one ether channel it's very popular you might have done in switches i also did in switch sometime before it's the same way you're going to do it on asa there is nothing big difference but the redundant interface is not common everywhere it is seen in asa only according to me it is seen in only asa you know a redundant interface concept so let us see how to configure a redundant interface on ASA before that let us learn what is redundant interface redundant interface 
So this is also a logical interface like ether channel, PO port channel interface. But the difference is you will not have all the links active. And how many links you can bundle? Only two links you can bundle. Only two links you bundle. And uh, for the bundle, you have an IP, uh, name called a redundant interface. One, two, three, anything. Redundant interface. Interface redundant. That is how the command will go. And whatever the IP address that you want to assign, you assign to the logical interface, the redundant interface, not to the physical interface. And then make the physical interfaces as member of that redundant interface. You can have up to two interface. The basic idea is for redundancy. If one of the physical interface goes down with your ISP, still you will not lose connectivity. Immediately ASA will uh, use the other link for talking to your ISP. So uh, connection between your, you and your ISP will never go down when you have redundant interface concept. So two links will be there. One will be active, another will be standby. When one of the link goes down, the, act, the standby will become active immediately. Now, you need to think about fundamental problems that will come when you keep switching like this. See, every interface has got its own MAC address. So on the ISP router or in your ARP so far, in your ARP so far, you are using first link. So in, in your ARP table, you will be learning the MAC address of your ISP's first link. Now when you switch the other interface, MAC address need to get changed. So ARP has to send the broadcast, layer to broadcast and discover the neighbor. So neighbor's MAC address will be learned through ARP response. By the time you will lose a lot of packets. Correct. But that will not happen here. How it is possible? How it won't happen? So what happens is when you when you create a redundant interface, it picks the first interface MAC address as its own MAC address. Repeating again, when you create the logical interface redundant one, the MAC address for the logical interface will become the MAC address of the first physical interface that you make it as a member. Now, when that first physical interface goes down, the MAC address will not go down. The MAC address will be still active with the redundant interface. So, when you use the second link, E02, the MAC address of E02 will not be effective. The MAC address which was already in use will be the same MAC address for E02 also. So, MAC address is floating here. It is same like a HSRP, VRRP concept. MAC address floats. Now, you can also manually provide a MAC address for the redundant interface. So that, that MAC address will be always used. The physical interface MAC address will never be used. So what I'm saying is you can also provide a MAC address manually. Right. So, how many redundant interface in an ASA you can have 8 redundant interface? I am not saying you can have 8 interface in a bundle, no. You can have redundant interfaces 8. Meaning, you can have 2-2 two, two pairs of interface 8. 8 pairs of Redundant interface, you can have redundant one interface. We'll have Ethernet 0, 1 and 0, 2. Redundant two interface, we'll have 0, 3 and 0, 4. Redundant three interface, we'll have 0, 4 and 0, 5. Is that understood? So you can have eight redundant interfaces. In each, you will have two links only, two physical links or logical links only, only two. It can be a physical link, it can be also a sub-interface, logical link, like this. You see, this is how you create a redundant interface. In the global mode, you say interface redundant, give any number. So this will be only up to 1 to 8. You now I'm using the first number. I'm saying what all interface need to be a member of the redundant interface. So I'm giving, uh, here I'm giving 
E02 and E03 as a member and then I am giving a name not on the physical interface but on the logic interface. Same like port channel configuration. Security level, IP address, everything you do it on the redundant interface. Alright. That's all. Now one of the link goes down. One, If the active link goes down, standby will become active immediately. Okay. So I am going to implement the same now. Uh, for you and these are the verification commands show redundant interface it will show you which is active and which is standby right now 02 is active 03 is standby you can manually change 03 as active by giving this command redundant interface redundant one active member g03 after saying that if you type show interface redundant one you can see 03 is active so you can manually change an interface to become a member interface by default whatever the interface that you configure first see you configured 02 as a first member so that will become active do you understand by default the interface that you assign first will be the active and the second interface will become the standby but if you want the other way around you can use this command to make it happen let's see in the command line let us delete the configuration on switch no port channel one no interface port channel one Yeah, and should say it's same only. No, no, I, I'm cancelling the old configuration. On switch, it will be you know separate, separate interface, as you said. Interface zero slash one iPhone two. I said no switch port. I'll put switch port back. Switch port. Okay, so. The changes that I made before I have removed it now it's a normal switch let us go to ASA first and finish it off on ASA host name is ASA and then interface G0 slash 0 I need to say what no shutdown only interface G0 slash 2 no shut only next interface redundant one member interface member interface i am saying you see g0 slash zero as the first member so that will become the active and then member interface g0 slash two so as soon as you give this you are getting a log message information what it says hey you are assigning this interface what I'll do is I'll go and remove whatever you configured if you would have configured IP address security level I'll remove from there so even if you mistakenly give IP address there no worries when you assign as a member of a redundant interface it will get removed automatically now whatever you configure you configure where on the redundant interface so I'll say name if outside Second level is given as 0. Let it be like that. So IP address I would like to give 20.0.0.10. .0 IP address is given. Name if is given. No shutdown is given. That's all. Let us verify show interface redundant. Sorry. Show interface redundant 1. You can see here 0, 0 is active. And see the MAC address. This is the MAC address right now it has taken okay it is one of the interface actually now if you want to give your own MAC address you can give it so for that you go under redundant one interface and say MAC address and uh, type your own MAC address assume I want to give my own MAC address as 1111 I change the MAC address let us check it out show interface redundant one 
you see the macular has got changed yeah now sh should I repeat that okay if you want to make 0 to as active manually if you want to do it command is this redundant interface redundant one see redundant interface is the command redundant one is the name of the interface and then active member g0 after saying this if you go now show interface redundant you can redundant one you can see g02 is active now not g0 0 g00 is no more active but the mac address remains the same you see the mac address remains the same so there won't be an rp issue at all all right now what is next is we want to verify this for that i'll go to okay before that show name if i can see that redundant interface has got the name and the security level i also want to check the routing table show route so redundant interface is given with a name called outside so that is the one which is now working for me and let us go to the switch. Do I need to go to switch? Not necessary. All are in VLAN 1 by default. Let me configure this R2 and try pinging. If the ping is happening, uh, interface E0 slash 0, no shirt, IP address, I'll give 20.0.0.20 .0 .0 .0 .0 there. I gave 10 there, here I'm giving 20. Now, if I ping, the ping will happen. Ping 20.0.0.10. This ping is going to happen now. If switch has got some problem, then it won't ping. Let's see. Did I say no shutdown on the interface? Let me check. Show interface show IP interface yeah it is up ping 20.0.0.20 yeah it's sorry 10 I should ping 10 it's not pinging so something is wrong with the switch let me go and fix the switch switch show MAC address table It is learning IP address on E00, but it is not giving or learning anything on E01. Show VLAN brief. I am seeing 01 and 02 in VLAN 1. 00 is also in VLAN 1. No issues with the VLANs. Show IP interface brief. Oh, they are administratively down. Interface Ethernet 0 slash 1, no shut. Interface Ethernet 0 slash 2, no shut. Okay, now I'm expecting this ping to happen now from uh, R2. Give some time for the listening, learning process. It will start pinging now. Okay, if uh, I'm not pinging the reason, maybe why, you know? The reason may be because of the spanning tree. I need to check even the spanning tree on switch. Okay, it's pinging now. Let's check the spanning tree now. Show spanning tree. What are the interface? E0 slash 1 and 0 slash 2. It is forwarding only. Uh, the problem, the reason why, you know, it is forwarding and this is root is on ASA side, both are not active. So, loop will not occur. BPD will not come. So, 
it is taken care so no need to worry about stp stp won't be a problem here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to ping again maybe 100 times or 200 times as i'm pinging i'll shut down the interface the active interface and see whether the failover happens i'll say repeat 1000 times as it, oh, oh, it's going very fast. <laughs> Thousand times is not enough. So let us uh, put any big number that you let it ping like this. So what interface is active now? Zero two is active. So I need to shut down this interface on AS on switch. On switch, I need to say interface Ethernet zero slash two shut down. But I want to parallelly see. The impact okay I shut down one three packet gone maybe it's a virtual environment so according to AS it is still thinking that zero two is alive it's a virtual environment no that's why it is not happening but in real world it will happen immediately I've seen this many times. No, this is not the actual behavior. Then there is no, uh, there is no big uh, deal in learning. No. Intentionally, you are saying no shutdown automatically. The ASA will know that, okay, this is shut down. I need to make it up. It will make the other one up. I want to check, you know, when... Yes. I want to check when uh, the other guy, opposite guy goes wrong, goes bad. So this long it is taking means it is because of your uh, our virtual environment. ASA still assumes that it is up. Okay, so let me say no shutdown and make the ping continue. As it is continuing now, I'm going to test as you said. Okay, when it starts continuing, I'll go to ASA and shut down the port as you said, 0 2. Yeah, I need to shut down zero two. The another reason why it takes long time is I didn't enable port port first. I should have enabled port first. Okay, now it is pinging. I'm going to say interface G zero slash two. Interface G zero slash two. Shut. Okay, see how quickly. Only one packet I lost. Just one packet because it's on the same machine. Let me bring the interface up. Not even a single packet I lost. Now let me see who is active. Show interface written in one. See, okay, zero one remains active. So once it has, there is no preemption. See, when, when I when I say zero two. No shutdown, it is not coming up as an active. So whatever is active remains active until it goes down. That is good only, no? Why unnecessarily we need to switch over? No preemption is needed here. See, again I am shutting down the main interface, only one packet lost. And I am saying no shutdown, so 0 2 will be active now. So interface redundant one so zero two is active the MAC address will never change so let us go to the switch and check the MAC address it will be the same MAC address every time show MAC address table so the MAC address that is learnt is <coughs> this triple one even if I change the interface it is going to be the same. So let us change the interface and see. 
<coughs> right now 0 2 is active so i'll make 0 1 as active now by shutting down 0 2 so one packet will be lost okay again it started going so who is active now 0 0 is active but here the MAC address remains the same. See the interface changed. The interface changed but the MAC address is same. Wonderful. So redundant interface is working good in this license that we have. All right. Where do we need a layer 2 firewall? Now, if R1 and R2 needs to be in same subnet then definitely the middle device need to be a layer 2 device correct if r1 and r2 need to be in same subnet if they need to be in same subnet then uh, our middle device should be a layer 2 so here switch is a layer 2 that's why we are able to ping from asa to r2 similarly if i want asa to be transparent for these two routers R1 and R2 should not see ASA as a routing device it should see it as a normal LAN or LAN device it should be transparent according to RA RA1 the next hop is RA2 that is how it should be so if you want to give that feeling you need to convert this layer 3 capable device to be a layer 2 capable device the command to do it is firewall transparent so when you say firewall transparent it becomes a layer 2 firewall all the inspections all the stuff that you learn in layer 3 is the same only thing is it won't do routing job on the redundant interface I gave IP addresses 20.0.0.10 I'm going to remove this and give it to RA. So according to RA, R, RA2 is the next op and ASA will be seen as one transparent device, one LAN device, one layer 2 device. It won't be a layer 3 device. For doing that, go to ASA first and make it as right now. If you type show mode, show firewall, you can see it is a router firewall. I'm going to make it as a transparent firewall, a switch. Command is this, same firewall, transparent. Now every configuration will be removed from ASA. All that you configured will be removed. Show firewall now, it says it's a transparent firewall. Now show interface IP brief no interface is up no IP address it's blank show name if see remember we were having written and all those things are removed now no more it's fresh how to go back to router mode no firewall transparent this is the command don't forget it is not firewall router if you want to go back to router mode it is no firewall transfer okay don't try firewall router now if you type show firewall it will show you as a router by default the default firewall mode is router mode now you see when when i was having a router mode before i configured written in interface but now everything is gone show interface ip brief see you don't have written it so you need to take a backup before you switch from one firewall mode to another firewall otherwise you need to redo everything careful if you are already using a, as a router firewall if you just simply want to test whether it will support transparent or not don't give the command firewall transparent without backing up why when you come back you will not see any of your configuration okay We have made 
no we have not made transparent let us make transparent firewall transparent okay now it is transparent firewall show firewall it is going to show you transparent now let us uh, let us go to router one router one as per our plan we want to make ethernet 0 slash 0 IP address as 20.0.0.10 is that right correct no so on, on router 2 what we have 20.0.0.20 okay don't forget that we have 20.0.0.20 if you want I can quickly show you if the ping is over uh oh still ping is going on I'll draw one thing I'll reload the router stop I'll reload hmm. okay so this is going to have 20.0.0.20 and already we configured R1 now fine so router 2 show interface IP brief show IP interface brief see it is 20 here now what we are expecting is if I enable telnet line VTY 04 password 123 so by default TCP and UDP is inspected right so if a telnet from R1 we are expecting a telnet to happen the reason is the middle device is a transparent device correct but it will not happen I'll tell you the reason why see the, the telnet is not happening but the firewall is transparent it's supposed to allow but why it is not allowing the reason is see it's a firewall it needs the packet to get processed by the firewall firewall demands all the packets to get processed by itself but if the firewall needs to stop the packet and process it it needs an identification now firewall needs an identification so what we do is we create something called bridge virtual interface it's like a zone pairing okay so you need to put this interface in an inside zone put this interface in an outside zone and then pair it we pair it by using something called BVI interface, bridge virtual interface. So what I'll do is I'll say host name. Yeah, yeah we need to do it. Okay. Now what I'm doing is interface G0 slash 1. I'm saying no shutdown. No shut. Name if you need to give here name if inside and then interface let us use one of this interface you can also use redundant interface you want me to do on redundant okay g0 slash 0 no shut name if outside and then we are not giving IP address because it's not a layer 3 firewall but still you need an IP address for the entire firewall meaning for the for the zone pair to identify so that IP address that you assign should be in the same subnet as you have in R1 and R2 so what I'll do is I'll say interface BVI 1 no shut okay no shut is not necessary here because it is logical and then I'll say uh, IP address the IP address that I would like to have here is 20.0.0.1 we have not used anywhere right that's all that's all now if I say show interface IP brief I'm seeing a BVI interface with an IP address but this BVI interface has got two members right zone pairing right but where did we pair we didn't any, we didn't do any pairing we didn't we didn't say the members of BVI so for that 
you need to go under the interface g0 slash 1 and say bridge group 1 so you are making a as a member of bvi 1 you understand interface g0 slash 0 same command bridge group 1 after saying this if you type the same command show interface ip brief you will see this ip address is copied to this two interface this is the good sign now if you tell net from r1 this tell net will happen see it is happening let's go to asa and check it out anywhere show con you see it is allowing traffic from outside to come inside they are in same subnet now will the ping happen no so all those policies are same only thing is asa is a layer to firewall now yeah ping now to 20.0.0.20 it's not going to happen unless you write an acl or do inspection all right let's do the inspection if you want this ping to happen i can say show run copy that uh, default class map and policy map which is binded globally that's it now if you go back to this and ping this ping is happening so quickly let me repeat for many times only then you know i can show you the session it's very fast actually now show connection see for icmp it has opened So, how is it? Easy, no? This layer 2 firewall also supports natting now. Previously, it was not supporting. Whatever the natting that you learned yesterday in layer 3, it is also available in layer 2. Now, you can nat the same subnet address. You don't want to show your original address. So, you want to, you want to nat it with a different address. Your original address is 20.0.0.0. 10 but you want to add it to 20.0.0.100 so according to r2 it will be seen as 20.0.0.100 not the original address that is also possible okay same as you did before yesterday show net right now we don't have any net so it won't show show accelerate it won't show but you can enable netting by creating object or and then in the global mode you can say nat inside comma outside everything is same whatever you did yesterday all right all right then any questions